Rio production drops out of Carnival 2020. Minister of Labor and Social Affairs says bottom line is that it is up to the Minister of VSR to establish an objective framework. But first up, Minister of Finance announces that the road tax is due no later than the end of February 2020. Those are the headlines for Tuesday, February the 18th, 2020. This is SXM Daily News. I'm Valerie Van Putten. Thank you for joining me. Now for the details. Minister of Finance Ardwell Irion is informing the general public, in particular owners and operators of motor vehicles on St. Martin, that in accordance with Article 11.1 .1 of the Motor Vehicle Tax Regulation, otherwise known as road tax, the yearly payment therefore, uh, thereof is due no later than the last day of February 2020. The article states that the number plates must be requested and collected at a receiver's office for each tax year from the first working day of the month of January up to and including the last day of the month of February against payment of the amount due. And as such, vehicle owners are urged to have their annual road tax paid on or before the aforementioned deadline in order to drive their vehicle on the public roads. Failure to comply may result in a fine or confiscation of the vehicle. Article 25.1b of the Motor Vehicle Tax Regulation warns that a fine of maximum 500 guilders is applicable to the driver of a motor vehicle on public roads without having paid the due and payable tax. As the 2020 number plates have not yet arrived on the island, Article 11.1 or 11.4 rather, of the Motor Vehicle Tax Regulation, which states from March 1st to each tax year, the new number plate must be attached to the motor vehicle. It will not be applied until further notice, but in any case, after the 2020 number plates have arrived on the island. It is advisable to keep the receipt or proof of payment of the 2020 road tax in the vehicle in the event that you are requested by the police to provide this. The road tax can be paid by means of cash, checks, or maestro at the receiver's office in the government building on the Swaliga uh, Boulevard, Monday to Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 2.45 p.m., and in the PSC building in Simpson Bay from 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon and from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Payments can also be made at the Windward Islands Bank Limited. Valid vehicle insurance and valid inspection cards are required when paying the road tax. In the event of a recently purchased vehicle, a bill of sale is required. The cost of the license plates have not increased from the previous year. The chart below indicates the cost of the license plates for gasoline and diesel vehicles in categories of the different types of license plates. Minister of Labor and Social Affairs Pamela gordon Carty, in responding to questions from the members of Parliament regarding the proposed new labor laws, which was held on Monday, February the 17th at the Parliament building, Minister Carty concluded that the bottom line is that it is up to the Minister of VSR and is completely at liberty to establish an objective framework that is clear for everyone. She also spoke of the discrimination in the employment job market on the island. Last but not least, I want to state that the policy in question falls under the discretionary authority of the Minister of VSA. Nothing more and nothing less. It is up to the Minister of VSA to determine what constitutes the requisite amount of effort that employers must undertake in trying to fill vacancies with suitable local candidates. As such, if the Minister of VSA establishes that employers are not or insufficiently making efforts, or worse, actually circumventing the procedures by creatively presenting incorrect qualifications of functions, Knowing that the foreigners will be performing other tasks, the Minister of VSA is completely at liberty 
that is not to say obligated, to establish an objective framework that is clear for everyone to safeguard that the obligation in question, namely exercising best efforts, is adequately adhered to. Mr. Chair, what I also want to, to state with this statement is, in my tenure as minister, the 29th, basically of February would have been three months that I am in office. The amount of work permits that has crossed my desk is basically alarming. And what is very, um, I wouldn't want to use the word annoying, I would want to use the word alarming still, because at the end of the day, <laughs> you know that there are unemployment out there. It's not a small amount that we can say we just push it under the table. We are talking of 6,636. This figure was not just brought across by me. We use data, official data, and data that apparently Consumer Coalition also used, and he came out with a higher amount, 11,520. It's almost double of what I had. And I took into account that basically when the surveys were conducted, that certain criteria were basically missed. And therefore I reached to 6,636. And he reached to 11,520. How is it possible that we can be signing off on work permits for functions that I'm sure it have locals can execute these type of jobs. And there are locals out there, even though they are qualified, they are willing to take a next job lower than what they are qualified for. It's a matter of presenting them to the market. So I find it hard to believe that the exercise to make the policy target our unemployed locals is being basically criticized right now by a selective group. It has to be a balance. The unemployment group have the right, just like anyone else, they have the right to work. They are human. They have family that they need to feed. People are talking about social economical effect. Social economical effect is not going to become worse because of this policy. The social economical effect has been deteriorating from way before, not because of this policy. The second thing I also want to state is, how can investors come in our country and because we are presenting them with our policy to protect our market, our local labor market, that they consider that it's not a good place for them to invest. My question is, do we really know what investors want? Investors basically, I'm a business person myself. Before going, getting into ministry, that I was approached, I'm a business person. I study overseas. I see how people deal when it comes to foreigners and how the country reacts to foreigners. Our country protects the local market. There is no difference with St. Martin. We have been open for many years. We invite foreigners. We invite investors. There is nothing wrong with investing. St. Martin Hub, St. Martin is a hub. That will not change because of this policy. Incoming member of parliament, Claudius Moncamper, queried the educational system and asked about the number of work permits that had been requested in 2018 and 2019. He queried whether it was a decrease or an increase. 
you, I'm going to use your numbers because those you can verify. The 6,636 that were unemployed in 2018. What are the numbers of 2019, if you have them, maybe? Was there a decrease or was there an increase? And if there was an increase, in which sectors specifically was this increase? I would like you to make a holistic comparison towards education. I noticed that out of the 10 uh, critical va vacancies that are most sought after, you talk about an electrician, a steel installer, this is a steel bender, a carpenter, a plumber, and a mason. These are five technical um, trades that can be easily done at LTS level and justified at MTS level if you're really looking for the cream of the crop. These were things that we had here in the past. We changed our educational system and we changed the outcome of the classroom. So with that in the back of your mind, is there also going to be a cry to maybe review how we are dealing with the students that we are taking out of the classroom and putting in the job market? Are they equipped enough to give substance to what is asked for on the market? The market should not be a training center, though, because I don't know who's going to pay for the counterpart then. So I just wanted to know if you're going to look at maybe that issue also. Um, I noticed that the number one, two, and three vacancies are most sought after, or most requested vacancies are cooks, maids, and I want to believe that's where you try to make a connection with the ethnic recruitment. Am I to see that specifically <coughs> so, that in the cooks and maids is where the ethnic, or is this across the board? I see you shaking your head, so it's not across the, it's, it's not one group specifically looking for cooks or specifically looking for maids, but it's across the board. So every family is having a problem with cooks and maids. Those are not available on St. Martin. So Sundial has a problem. They couldn't even bring out some simple cooks. I just want to, because we are making some serious punctuations in the reportings, I want to be sure that because I'm going to keep hammering on the educational system. Um, the groups that came out um, in, in uh, how would I say, in uproar against the policy, I'm sure they have their reasons, and I can find myself, I believe, in one of those reasons, and that's sitting in on an interview. I think it's far-fetched, in my opinion, that the Labour office should sit in on an interview. If... They are statistical, and I want to, I'm going to come to statistical, not hearsay. Is there statistical information showing that people that apply at specific stores or in specific uh, groups of companies, they never pass the test? They always fail that maybe we can then say, okay, let us create a structured interview format that if people continuously fail, we would want to maybe film the interview with their consent and see how the questions are really being asked, how things are really being put forward towards the employee, but also the employer. Because at, you want to protect both sides. You don't want to take out a side by stating A or B. Um, again, like I, I said, are the people that are going to these interviews prepared for these interviews? Um, if you believe, and I don't want to talk for you, but since you decided to put in the, in, in the policy that people or that labor should be present in the interview, I need to believe that you feel that these interviews are being manipulated in one way or the other so that the outcome is to ensure that the local candidate doesn't get a job to justify publicizing the vacancy, having passed the interviews, so now you can get a permit. Um, if this is the case, how do you plan on mitigating it 
without having to sit in to the interviews? Is there any way a failed candidate of an interview can appeal? Is there any place they can appeal if they have applied for 15 jobs and every one they failed? But when they are interviewed by you all, they seem to have the craft properly. And still to come, incoming member of parliament Omar Akhi says he has always championed locals in the job market. We'll have the details to that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. The traffic department was alerted to a serious traffic accident that took place on the Walton Elizabeth Road on Saturday evening, February the 15th, 2020, about 9.15 p.m. Personnel of the dispatch received a call that the driver of a red Toyota Corolla traveling from the stoplights towards Salt Pickers Roundabout struck a pedestrian in front of Swaliga Guest House. According to the investigation done by the traffic department, the pedestrian who was walking towards the guest house on Nisbeth Road tried crossing the road without paying attention to the traffic. As a result, the vehicle with the number plate M10699 struck the victim on the left side of his body. Due to the, police, uh, to the force of the collision, the pedestrian was tossed in the air and landed on the windshield of the vehicle. The victim with the initials RRG suffered only minor injuries and was treated on the scene by paramedics. It was later, he was later taken to the St. Martin Medical Center, the SMMC, where he was held overnight for further observation. The traffic department is investigating the cause of this ex accident. And in other news, the other incoming member of parliament, Omar Otley, said that he is not beating up anyone, but have always championed locals in the job market. He queried the amount of staff needed, the data bank, and the difference between St. Martin born and Dutch passport holders. I think people often have the wrong conception of things. Article 63 in our constitution allows the parliament to require, request the minister to be present to answer required questions. With that being said, parliament inviting the minister here today is basically doing our job. It's not to beat up on the minister or on the policy. I, for one, have championed locals being our preference in a job market. I, for one, I think I get the gist of your intentions. However, I think that the manner may be a little extreme um, I know that you are trying to close the gap that many employers use to basically run around the system, which is, let's put the article in the paper. We don't really interview people, and uh, I already know who I'm going to hire. So I understand. The part that is a little extreme is the Labor Department sitting in. If this is your belief, I would like to know what is the current staff what will be the number of staff members needed to carry out this function properly? Because there's a lot of businesses, especially if there's construction where somebody needs to hire 100 workers. How does this process work? If additional staff 
is needed, do you have an estimated budget? Because I am, I am assuming that your staff will need to grow. Another thing, is there a data bank of, giving you time, is there a data bank of possible workers? How is the assessment done to ensure that they are indeed skilled workers? Not just, hey, I'm a carpenter, I'm a mason. Is there a requirement of, of a certificate, a degree? How is it determined that they are indeed skilled in this profession? By saying locals, this may be, a, um, some may think this is an easy answer, but not to me. Are you meaning St. Martin born or Dutch passport holders? Because I'm assuming Dutch passport holders don't need a work permit. Okay, is there a link with the study finance or the education department to determine the amount of professionals that we have abroad on the island and will be graduating in 2020, 21, or 22? And now turning to our weather forecast. Pockets of moisture at the lower level of the atmosphere will cause cloudy periods and a few brief showers across the region. Meanwhile, a dominant Atlantic high-pressure system will continue to generate brisk winds. Seas will continue to peak near 9 feet during the next few days. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. Now let's turn now to our three-day forecast. And still to come, President of the Windward Islands Teachers Union, Claire Elshot, says that she is postulating herself for another two-year term. We'll have the details of that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition, PIN code, or fingerprint. Download Web Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. President of the Windward Island Teachers Union, Claire Elsha, told our newsroom recently that she will be postulating herself for another term of two years. She made the announcement last week and also revealed the name of her proposed successor that she will be grooming to take over as the new president. I will participate to be president again. The reason why I got a request internally, um, if I can do it the uh, next two years, but with the agreement that another, a younger person will be next to me for guidance. Because I did, uh, I did it with a younger person, but that person at this point in time has no interest in becoming a president. So we would try to groom the new candidate to as vice president or, or whatever. It depends on how the election go because at a given moment, if this younger person um, just come up with more votes than me, of course, then it's like you have to step aside. But I would still have a very, very, as past, immediate past president, a very influential role in guiding the person that if, if things happen, that they become the president. But um, let me, this, disclose that the candidate that put uh, um, that was put forward is a teacher at Ruby La Vega, Minerva uh, Marlin Cooper, and um, she has put herself forward. She has been voicing uh, on several occasions that she would like to have a more active role. So via the, the, the upcoming elections, which the date is not set as yet, we will be able, we are still trying to attract other people for positions because um, the voting goes like this. You vote for president, but then the board members, once you, they are voted for, 
they don't carry exactly well, you're going to be voted for a treasurer or whatever. It's in the first meeting after the election, then the different positions like treasurer, general secretary, and um, assistant treasurer, and those, those are then nominated in the first meeting. On Monday last, February the 17th, 2020, Real Productions Management decided to stand down from preparations for Carnival 2020. The coronavirus outbreak is having a major impact on the sourcing and delivery of raw materials out of China needed in the production of the Carnival costumes. Factories cannot guarantee the shipment of materials such as fabric, feathers, beads, gems, and trims in time for the production and sourcing these items out of the United States is simply cost prohibitive. President of Real Productions, Mrs. Brenda Wati, explained that due to disease prevention measures in factories and warehouses in China, all shipments are delayed and the uncertainty surrounding new delivery dates is simply too risky and will directly and adversely affect the production of our troop. As a real production section within uh, the Road Guards troop caters to approximately uh, 200 plus participants, the risk factor is simply too high. Real production is known for always delivering and living up to the demands and expectations of our valued customers. But with the recent development of the coronavirus outbreak, we can no longer guarantee the timely delivery of our costumes, bearing in mind that costumes, once produced, still have to be shipped from Trinidad. And that takes even more time. In the interest of preserving its good name and reputation, Real Productions prefers to withdraw and save its good standing amongst its revelers. And still to come, Lyons District Governor pays visit to the island. We'll have the details to that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. The St. Martin Lions Club welcomed the district governor of District 60B, Lion, Denise Forrest, PMJF, to the Friendly Island. She arrived on Monday last evening and will be here until Wednesday morning when she departs for St. Eustatius and for Saba, and after will continue her visit to the various clubs in this area. As is customary within the Lions Club organization, the district governor visits all the clubs in the region for an audit meeting and also to meet, interact, and engage with club members about lionism in general. District Governor Denise Forrest will visit the murals painted on the walls of the St. Martin Academy School, which is a project from St. Martin Leo Club. Later on Tuesday, she is scheduled to visit the No Kidding with Our Children Foundation, after school program who continues to execute some programs with the Lions Club International Lions Quest program. I'm Valerie Van Putten. Just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you back again here tomorrow.